Hi, I'm Tom, and last year, when I had the car jacked up, the plastic aerodynamic cover off, I noticed the oil pan had become very rusted. Since I didn't know how far it was rusted through, I decided to replace it before a hole developed and the oil leaked out. So, this is the procedure that I used to replace the oil pan. The car is a 2012 Mazda 3 with a Skyactiv G engine. I bought the OEM oil pan online from Burlington Mazda, and it cost about $112. I also got the Mazda RTV sealant, which was $9. At the same time, I bought the Lyle gasket separator from Amazon, about $25. From what I read in the reviews of some of the cheaper ones, the handles aren't attached very well and can come apart. So I'll start by draining all the oil. I'm also going to remove the oil filter, and so this will be a, an oil change along with replacing the pan. Looks like it's about done draining now. I installed a Fumoto valve into the old pan. It'll be easiest to take it off now while it's installed on the car. And I think I'm gonna wait until I do the first oil change before I put it on the new oil pan. And I'm also going to remove the oil filter. And let that drain for a bit. This is the Fomodo. It's basically a, a ball valve that screws in to where the oil drain plug goes. And I would Definitely recommend getting one of these if you do your own oil changes. You don't have to worry about stripping the threads on the plug once it's in. And you can kind of regulate the flow too of how fast the oil comes out. Okay, I'm going to reinstall the original drain plug just because it's still dripping. And now I'll start removing the bolts holding the pan on. They're eight millimeter head bolts. Last night I sprayed PB Blaster all around. I have a feeling it probably doesn't make any difference, but just with the, the amount of rust on these bolts, I'm a little nervous about stripping or, or even snapping one. So I have to do it very carefully. Here's one of the rust bolt heads. It's tight fit. The separator tool is a little more difficult to get started between the pan and the engine block. So I took a utility knife and cut away actually a little bit of the the old sealant so the kind of let the, the separator tool get started. So now it's it's gone started to go in. About as far as I can go in this direction. I think. So once I get as far as I can on this side, I'll go over to the other, to the back side, and uh, get that separated.
So this is a two pound hammer. And I think you need something at least that weight. It's definitely uh, goes in a lot harder than I thought it would. Oh, there was a little bit of oil left apparently. <laughs> I'm removing the plastic uh, kind of hanger that holds one side of the aerodynamic undercover. And in doing that, trying to take those bolts out, I sheared one right off, but it's not like a, a major deal. It should stay on. It's not, I'm not sure how important it is, how aerodynamic it is. But kind of getting in the way of swinging the hammer. So I thought it was best to get it out of the way. Ten-year-old silicone doesn't, doesn't really want to go. Eleven-year-old. I see a little separation there from, again, from the block. Okay, it looks like it's just about ready to come free. I think I can pull it. I'm hitting something. It was actually hitting the edge of the, uh, the oil filter housing, so I just kind of pushed it towards the front of the engine, and then it came free. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I just got to bring the old gasket material off the engine block, and I'll be ready to put the new pan on. See, this is going to take a little while, but you want to get every trace of the old gasket or gasket sealer off, not gasket, but the sealer off of there. The Mazda manual mentions using the bolts with the old silicone uh, seal adhering could cause cracks in the cylinder block. And so, this right here, take that off and finding. Uh, Using a wire brush gets all the old uh, RTV silicone out of the threads. So if you're using the old bolts, you know, make sure that you get all the old uh, sealer off. A little bit in here. Well, the old sealer is all scraped off for the combination of using a, just a plastic scraper like this. And I actually found a thumbnail was about the most effective scraper. And then I wiped off all the old oil. I used to just put some brake cleaner on a rag and went over the surface. There's still oil dripping down and oil seems to be kind of getting on the surface from the engine, so the last thing to do will be give it a good wipe right before installing the new pan. Before installing the new oil pan, I found it kind of uh, useful to take the old one and just kind of do a couple practice runs to line everything up. This 
bent piece at the far end there that goes against that plate on the front of the transmission it has to hook over the opening there. So once that's in, slowly bring it up. I have it a little bit towards the front of the engine because coming out it hit the uh, oil filter fixture. So it's past that. So I'll just try to line it up as best I can. Line the bolt holes up and get a couple bolts in. The main thing is when bringing the pan up, don't want to hit the sealant against anything or put your fingers in it. So I'm just going to do, do that a few times just to kind of get the, the feeling for it. This is the bend in the oil pan that I mentioned. It's on the back side right up against the transmission. And it goes behind this thin middle plate between the engine and the transmission. So you can't really install the, the oil pan by lifting it straight up. You have to kind of angle it in and get that, that bend behind the plate. I knocked together this uh, kind of like a cradle from old pallet parts. Just for something for the even some of the packing that came with the, with the pan. For it to sit in while I'm putting on the sealant and also to transfer it underneath the, the car before lifting it up there to, just to keep from tipping over and getting scratched. I also just put little pieces of masking tape with the numbers for the uh, tightening order on the pan. I figured this will be a lot easier just to look at those rather than keep referring back to the manual for that order. Before applying the sealant to the rim of the pan, I'm just going to spray a little brake cleaner onto a rag and just in case there's any grease that got on there. Also any debris that might have fallen into the pan. The manual says to lay a bead two to six millimeters thick, so I cut the opening to four. Okay, that should be good. And it says to lay a continuous bead. It's very thick stuff. Well, I wasn't really able to do it all in one continuous bead. But uh, it's just, it's so thick, it's kind of hard to squeeze it out. But I've got 10 minutes, it says, before it starts to harden. So let's get this on the car. Give it a pick up a wipe, too. Uh, does it look clean from that side? Yeah, it looks okay. All right, let's go. I'm squished out in this direction towards the bolt holes. Okay, at this point they must be very far. I mean, at this point, don't worry about the order. All, right. All the bolts are hand tightened down. The manual says to use a torque. 
torque of 71 to 97 inch-pounds, which is 8 to 11 newton meters. So starting with number one, two, three, four, 17 and 18 okay well it's on I'm gonna put the oil filter on but I think I'm gonna let it sit overnight to cure before putting any oil in and then we'll check in the morning and hope we have no leaks it's the next day and I've filled the engine with oil and driven around a bit there's no trace of oil anywhere, so I think we're good. I won't know whether the old pan would have held up or eventually sprung a leak. For about the same cost as an hour's labor at a dealership and a few hours work, I have a new oil pan and a little peace of mind.